Hi, I'm uh, Vipul Ved Prakash. I'm the CEO of uh, Together. Uh, our mission at Together is to democratize generative AI. You know, we believe this is a very consequential technology with really broad applications, and there should be a thriving open source ecosystem and competitive models in the open uh, uh, for people to build applications around. Great. And Rodrigo Leon, co-founder and CEO of Samba Nova. And uh, Vipul, again, thank you very much for joining us for this webinar. Yeah, we've uh, we've been talking with you and your team for a little bit about some of the exciting things that uh, you're wor uh, you're working on, and uh, we're in this uh, uh, world of generative AI and uh, all sort of all, all sorts of incredible incredible uh, innovation. And uh, I actually thought that you know you guys are doing you know, really to try to figure out how to democratize it and create. Uh, you know, more access for uh, these technologies to the world was really interesting. So maybe you could just spend a few minutes talking about how you guys are, you know, uh, uh, how, how you guys are going about taking, um, um, you know, taking this technology for 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 the uh, for the community. We think it's really important for uh, the community to have access to the models, uh, full access to the models, so they can participate in creation of it. Uh, you know, just it's a computationally expensive and computationally constrained uh, technology, both on the training side and the inference side. And uh, part of what we're doing is solving that problem by building a decentralized compute platform, which is accessible to the open community. Uh, and we're very excited to be partnering with uh, Samanova. You, you know, you guys build. Uh, the best uh, AI hardware in the world. And, uh, you know, uh, by connecting resources, uh, compute resources together from uh, all the way from, uh, you know, university labs to, uh, 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 you know, crypto mining operations to, you know, very high end hardware, uh, we want to provide this base compute platform. That, and that's one part of it. Uh, I think this is a very, building these models can be a very collaborative uh, community driven process where uh, different members in the community bring research ideas, data together, uh, and, and and we build models and benchmark them. And that's sort of how we are going about it. We, we, we think that uh, you know, in some ways these models are built on um, you know the output of human society, the, the, the uh, they're trained on large sections of the web, and uh, it sort of makes sense that uh, the process of building them and using them has, uh, uh, you know, part, part of it is a public good. Uh, yeah. so that's, and it, it's really exciting for, uh, you know, a variety of uh, folks in academia, as well as AI communities and companies that are wanting to build applications around foundation models. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely true. We're super excited about partnering with you and your team as well. I think such an innovative way of doing things and and uh, and and certainly are, you know, we 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 um, have some platforms that we can you know help and we're just excited about the types of models you're you're uh, building and you know and really engaging in an open way, right? That's how we in Sumanova we've always thought about the you know the the, the ideas, the best ideas, you know, will ultimately win and, and engaging with the open community and really being able to foster the best ideas out there over time, that's kind of what advances us forward. So super exciting. I mean, on that note, I mean, we're going through this, you know, you talk about foundation models and you know, some of the amazing, amazing trends there. What's, you know, today we're, we're really you know, the entire planet is just over the moon on generative AI. So, so what what is your view on why right. why transformation? What's so exciting about these generative models? How how, how do you see it, uh, Vipul? Um, you know, I I think one it really kind of solves these hard problems in AI that were essentially intractable a few years ago. Uh, there there are various exciting things about it. For me, I think. Uh, one that is probably not talked about as much is how uh, much accuracy these uh, models can achieve on natural language tasks. You know, we've seen uh, in the last few years on things like uh, uh, Stanford question and answering data set, large models improved accuracy by 23%, which is more than what we had in the last decade. And I, I, I think it's pushing the accuracy, uh, uh, you know, levels from kind of 
high 70s to you know mid 90s and high 90s and i think that's really sort of transformational because now you can use these models in production use cases uh you know and uh, apply them to a large class of problems um you, you know the other uh, aspect is uh, versatility i mean these models are general purpose the, the same model that writes python code can write elegant poetry and professionally respond to customer support requests uh and I think you can adapt them to new tasks with incredible ease. You know, sometimes you need, uh, you know, what just one or two examples of a task for the model to start performing that task at a high accuracy. And, and you compare this to sort of last generation of uh, AI, where you are, you know, doing massive amounts of data annotation per task to get to that point. So, uh, you know, potentially reducing the development time of new tasks from years down to you know a couple of hours, uh, it's bound to have some really major effects. And uh, I, I think what's really caught on about generative AI and and, and sort of people identify it is that these models have the ability to be creative. Uh, you know, so far AI has been sort of functioning in fixed domains, uh, but with foundation models, uh, you know, they, they synthesize. Um, vast amounts of information and, and come up with novel solutions. Uh, so, yeah, so machines are no longer programmed robots. They are, you know, starting to become creative partners in, in different forms of uh, human endeavor, uh, which is, I think, game changing. Uh, yeah. So all this is super exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super exciting. Yeah. Um, um, and, and, you know, people, you know, we, uh, as you and I discover our, our our community, our target uh, market is really on the enterprise, and we talk to uh, large enterprises and and large organizations, public sector organizations. You know, you and I discussed, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, a few days ago about you know the fact that you know there's some really interesting work also being done by governments in the public sector, and so. Um, you see the breadth of these models across consumer, all sorts of way to enterprise. You train all sorts of different models and all sorts of different things. So how do you see as kind of the biggest differences between, say, the consumer applications for these types of generative models versus kind of our, our subsection of it, which is really large organizations and, uh, and enterprises? Right? How, how do you see uh, you know, the, the difference between those two? Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know, consumer uh, apps like ChatGPT and Stable Diffusion have really taken the world by but storm, and uh, you know, but I still think it's a new platform, and it, it'll take uh, uh, a couple of years for for revolutionary apps, consumer apps, to start appearing. This sort of happened with mobile phones. Things like Uber appeared, you know, a few years after uh, mobile phones were sort of created. Um, and, you know, I expect a lot of, you, you know, new ways of doing everything from like booking your vacation to, uh, you know, social media and the consumer space. Uh, I think enter enterprise space is fairly different uh, in, in some ways. Uh, one, uh, you know, you require a high level of accuracy and dependability in, uh, you know, in enterprise processes. And for these models, uh, uh, you know, they can be opaque, but we need to sort of infuse transparency, explainability, uh, you know, reproducibility. Uh, and, and it's important to have these notions uh, for success in the enterprise. And I also think that, uh, you know, the enterprise uh, uh, kind of platform needs to understand sort of data provenance, uh, data privacy, you know, to compartmentalize uh, different types of data. These models are very good at learning from data, which also makes them sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 makes it impo important to understand what data is in which model and, you know, uh, be able to track that and do access control. Um, you know, and I also think enterprises want to control their destiny and, and reduce dependence on other parties for something these things can become, and I think they will become sort of the central nervous system of uh, uh, companies. Uh, and one, I think open source is particularly well suited for that. Uh, I also think because of the, you know, uh, risks around privacy, uh, they, we will see a lot of on-prem and VPC deployments of these models rather than sort of mixing them all into one big model uh, hosted in the cloud. There's going to be unbundling of foundation models into the enterprise. 
and uh, uh, you know also fine tuned on enterprise data. Uh, I think that's another big trend that we see. Yeah, yeah, no, that that those are really good points. Of some of the reasons where we see from our customers why they want um, um, our our platforms behind firewalls and things like that. You know, we're a hybrid type of uh, computing environment. We can run on clouds and or behind firewalls, but many of them see data privacy is a big issue, and you want to train their data where the most private, you know, most uh, uh, important data is, and so uh, so they end up asking for the training to happen behind their firewall. So really, really uh, great points there. Right. Um, you know, yeah, it's, uh, we, we at Samanova, you know, as you know, you know we, we've got you here, we're very committed and partner in, in partnering with uh, open communities and companies that driving and leading the charge on open open models and things like that. And so, um, yeah, our, our goal is ultimately to create an environment that allows us to take those types of models and, and make them usable and make them uh, uh, enterprise uh, focus for our our target you know customers and clients and um, so how do you see that ecosystem that open ecosystem evolving um, and, and why is that important to to uh, customers to be thinking about? I, I think you made the point earlier that uh, best ideas can come from anywhere and uh, a part of uh, what the open ecosystem will create is uh, you know sort of crowdsource these best ideas uh, by enabling people to participate in it. I think it's become, when we look at you know, academia today, uh, uh, a lot of academia thinks of foundation models as something that's an industry thing, because partly because uh, there isn't a platform out there to uh, you know, do research and do experimentation around this. So I think by creating that, we'll see a lot more participation in the space, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and and a whole sort of all the way from I think research, fundamental research into model architectures, uh, uh, to you know applications of uh, 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 of the models, uh, you know, the whole whole sort of like software intelligence stack, uh, I think, can benefit from just sort of. The, the things that have happened in the open source community, uh, I think are fairly applicable here uh, to to open models. Right, now it almost feels like history repeating itself, right, with kind of when Linux came and all the different operating systems uh, from 20 years ago and how right. it took off because, you know, the open community was just really driving it forward at an incredibly fast pace, right? And so just looks like yeah. history is repeating itself here. Absolutely, and I, I would I would also cite like Wikipedia as a great example of uh, you know on the data side, it's sort of become uh, this very canonical resource, uh, you know that that is very high quality and uh, uh, you know fairly comprehensive, and I I, I also uh, think that data that goes into these models will benefit a lot from having a kind of a wider process. Right, right, right. No, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I like when you said about data, you know, and the privacy issues there, um, we, we've we've always said to someone over that, hey, models that train on your data should be your model. You own them, right? Your your data, your model. Um, even ones that are, you know, you know uh, leverage off of open source, fine tune. As soon as there's fine tuning data, you should own it, right? And, uh, um, and, and, and we just think that it's such an important aspect of, businesses being able to capture their knowledge base into a corpus, right? That uh, that then is trained into these models that, that we think that businesses should have, um, should own it. So in, in, in your world, as you think about kind of data and, you know, in, for generative AI, so why is so, like what, you know, you see these models trained with all this data, why do you think is that so critical? In particular, when it comes to enterprises, our customer, our target customers, why is it so critical for them to get the data right and make sure that they have that, uh, uh, that they have figured out when they're fine tuning their models? I, you know, I think these models are really incredibly robust foundations to do fine tuning on. And, you know, with the right data and the right sort of fine tuning recipe, uh, uh, you, you can apply enterprise data uh, and and synthesize them into these models, and the results are mind blowing. I mean, we, we you can get you know uh, sort of human level performance from the model fine tuned models uh, in enterprise data, and I I think uh, as enterprises start uh, you know adopting models and building their versions of it, 
uh, I, I think this will become more and more clear. And uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's really revolutionary. All, all the data that exists uh, can now sort of be activated in, in, in ways that was not possible before. Right, right. No, this is really great. You know, I think we're a little over time, Vipo, and so uh, really, but I know I took up more time than I had promised you. <laughs> so I know it was going to be very short, but this is just fantastic. I think your your know, your insights around this are just uh, so good and so precious, and so really appreciate your taking the time and sharing with us and sharing with our our community some of the th exciting things that you and together uh, are doing. And uh, and we're, we're we're just super excited to be partners with you. You know, and partners with you as the world evolves and 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 we figure out how 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 this new technology is going to change the world. Yeah, likewise, and I appreciate the the time and the opportunity to uh, talk with you today. Great. All right. Thank you so much, people.